Recently picked up the seven inch Blackmagic Video Assist to turn my Panasonic S5 into a 5.9K 12-bit B-RAW cinema camera. One of my first questions I had was how do I color correct the B-RAW footage from a V-Log file in DaVinci Resolve? Do I use a LUT, ACES, or manually color correct the footage from B-RAW created from V-Log? What kind of Frankenstein file would this look like in DaVinci Resolve? And is this the same B-RAW as the B-RAW from my Blackmagic 6K? Since I'm trying to use the S5 and the Video Assist as a B-Cam. We'll find out answers to these questions and a few different methods to quickly color correct. So let's jump in. The Video Assist has three different ways that it handles LUTs in exporting. So you can have a file with no LUT, you can have a file with the LUT and it's turned off, and you can have a file with the LUT and it's turned on. For the first one, the LUT is turned off. We do have a LUT selected, but it is off. So this is file number one. We're just gonna record a few seconds here. We'll go to 10 seconds. Now for the next one, we're gonna turn the LUT file on. This will save onto the file, the LUT will, but the LUT will still be turned off. So the third option is apply LUT in file. When you turn that on and display 3D LUT on, the LUT will be turned on and applied in the file. So here are the three files. You have LUT off, LUT on, and LUT on with apply LUT in file. So if you go to LUT off and you look in the camera raw area, you'll see there's no LUT down here. I don't even have one to select. If I go to LUT on and I go down, now you see it has an apply LUT, so if I go to clip, I can apply it or turn it off. This one has it already applied down here, so if I go down to clip, I can turn it off. So just to know that those options are there, where you can export three different ways out of the video assist. First, let's try a lot, then we'll try a few methods using ACES to compare. Open the color page, select LUTs in the upper left area, find Panasonic, then drop the VLOG to 709 on top of the node. Now I will show you another quick way you can do this. You can just double click, it also applies the LUT to the node. A quick note about grading a clip with a LUT. If you want to keep the general look of the LUT applied, but still want to adjust a few minor things, then grade to the left, adding nodes before the LUT. If you want to modify the look much more than the LUT and are using it as a baseline, then grade to the right. Since we're talking about LUTs, LUTs quickly demonstrate how to change the intensity of a node like the intensity of your 709 LUT, for example. Go to the key, the third icon from the right, and drag the gain from one to zero. So here's the key. We're gonna push that all the way down to zero. So you can see how that adjusts when I go from one clip to another. So back here, hit the reset button, pulls it all the way back to normal. And also, if I adjust anything here, there, turn it back on. If I adjust anything here, you'll see a little red dot appears. So anything you adjust has a, will get a red dot to it. And you can reset it with just a click of a button. Now let's try ACES and then compare that footage to the LUT. So we're going to go to the next one. I'm just going to come over here to Effects. Make sure that's turned on. Aces transform. I'm going to drag that on here. I'm going to select. Since this was V-Log, we can use either one of these. We'll use Panasonic V35 and push it out to 709. So it's a little bit different. You can see the differences. Well, it's quite a bit different. V-Log doesn't have as much saturation for sure. Now let's get a little more advanced with ACES and show how to apply it to a series of clips at once and create a workflow to color grade in the middle at the clip level. 
So first select light box. We're only going to use our third clip here as the example. If you could, you can select more than one clip, but for this test, we're just going to do one. So select the one, add into new group, aces group. Going to be real original there. So up top now, you'll see we have four drop down items. If we go back to the prior one where we just applied aces transform. You still only have two. So in this clip, we have four. So we're going to go to the pre clip and we're going to put an aces transform. And we're going to go to Panasonic. This time we're going to select aces CCT. Now CCT is the workspace. Now we're going to go to post clip drag aces back on, aces CCT coming in, and 709 coming out. Now if you look at the two 709s and aces, they look the same. But now, in this clip, you're able to color correct and adjust between or the correction. And if you need to adjust an entire group, you can do that here. I love the Alexa wide gamut. Let's give that a shot and transform it to the Alexa and see what this looks like. So instead of going to 709, we're going to transpose to Airy Log C. Then we're going to grab a LUT from Airy Log C and see if we like it any better to 709. Airy's a little softer. This is where you want to experiment and see if there are any type of look that you prefer. This is how I typically grade my footage in order to save the most time, making changes across multiple clips of similar footage. Whether the footage is shot in a similar location or same type of file, working in groups in Lightbox is a massive help. Now let's investigate what DaVinci Resolve can tell us about our clip and what special B-RAW options are now available since this clip was filmed in the video assist as a B-RAW file. Here's where some options open that you'll want to play around with on your own. So let's go to the next clip. Select the camera raw icon on the far left and the eye with the circle on the far right. You'll notice it says 16-bit file, but it's linear. It's still a 12-bit color file. This is where you can discover what bit level your files are, though. Quick rabbit trail. I could not find any information about what bit color the Canon M50 was filmed in until I dropped it in here and saw why it would fall apart so easily while color grading. It's only an 8-bit file. Sad day, invalidated what I was thought was happening. As a cheaper camera, it makes sense. The M50 is still great for what it does, though. Okay, back on track. Let's unlock the capabilities of your new B-RAW file and select Clip in the drop-down menu under Decode Using. All of a sudden, the rest of the drop-down menus are available, and so is Color Temp, Tint, and Exposure. You can now change any of this information. One important tip discovered by Sharif's research from DP Journey was to be sure to film in the correct color temperature on the Panasonic. The color temperature information was not working like a typical B-RAW file from a Blackmagic camera to adjust to the correct color temperature in post and accurately update in DaVinci Resolve. See the link to his video in the description discussing B-RAW on the S1H, which is essentially the same sensor minus the optical low-pass filter, the OLPF, to fix more A. Okay, you'll see V-Gamut and V-Log as the selected codec under Color Space and Gamma. You can change this to a number of other file formats, including Blackmagic Film. Now let's turn this clip into a Blackmagic Film file and color grade it. So we're going to go Blackmagic Film. Some of the Blackmagic options are a little different. So let's try Blackmagic Gen 5 Film to extended video. And then let's try doing this as an ACES transform. Blackmagic Film to 709 and do a comparison. I prefer extended video over video because you have a video option in here as well. Since video can clip some highlights, while well, extended video preserves more highlight detail in the visible range of the image. All image data is still preserved, of course, if you want to get it back. So let's just do a quick comparison. So this is B-RAW Extended Film 
This is B-Raw Film. So here's B-Raw Film versus Extended Film. Whenever you update a camera raw file, you want to hit update sidecar. It creates a separate file. You can see that looks like this. Now that we have all the files color graded, let's compare them. For the first file, we just used the VLOG LUT to 709, which was the exact same LUT that's applied from the S5. You can also apply the LUT if you save it that way. We already talked about that earlier. Second file, we applied ACES. So let's compare 709 to ACES. And then we did ACES as a workflow, which looked exactly the same, so we won't show that one again. Then we tried Airy Log C to see what that would look like with a 709 LUT. So now compare ACES 709 to the Airy to 709. Now we have B-RAW Extended Film and B-RAW Film. Like the colors look so different from the B-Raw film to the LUT. It is fairly easy to color grade B-Raw with a LUT or ACES, but I really enjoy ACES as a workflow to color grade groups of footage much easier. The additional B-Raw options unlocked using Clip in DaVinci can sometimes add complications if you don't need to adjust any of the clip settings. But it does provide features you might want access to in order to help speed up your grade, like using a different color space, changing exposure instead of ISO, or any of the gamut controls, then it's worth your efforts. Learning what it does is helpful regardless of which way you work today because it may help you in the future. So is this the same exact B-RAW as the B-RAW from my Blackmagic 6K Pro? The answer is no because of some of the information doesn't track correctly, like color temperature as Sharif pointed out in his video. But that's okay, just make sure to get your white balance as accurate as possible in shooting since white balance doesn't work as accurate as native shot Blackmagic B-RAW file, where you can easily correct white balance and post with no issues. This is of course a good practice regardless as you should probably want to see the shots as soon as possible to review. Justin Phillips shared how he would take his Blackmagic video assist with him after shooting and review the shots immediately, and this is so much better to do in something like a 7 inch video assist rather than your camera. Justin almost has me convinced to try the Sigma FP but it doesn't have IBIS so because of that S5 is a clear winner to me right now for my projects. I'm super excited to share a new fun trick bypassing autofocus issues from any camera so be sure to let me know any questions or comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for joining.